Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise we're going to be looking at uh, sampling distributions again. Uh, this time using them to calculate probabilities that our sample mean lies within some range or some distance of the true population um, mean. So in this exercise uh, here I've got starting salaries. I pulled this from a Time Magazine article. Uh, starting salaries by undergraduate major. So I've got engineering, computer science, math, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, let's assume just for the purpose of this exercise that these are the true population averages. They're probably based on samples themselves. They most certainly are. But for the sake of this exercise, let's assume these are our true population values. Uh, now, the article didn't give me a standard deviation, so I'm going to assume a sigma of $6,410, um, partly because that makes this problem work. So we would fudge the numbers a little bit so we can use, these, um, use the information. So here I'm going to calculate in both parts A, B, and C the, the probability that if I take a sample uh, of size 100 for size a, uh, for parts A and B, what's the probability that I'll be within $750 of the mean? So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. So uh, here I'm going to have, again, you know, we're, we're always working with two distributions. There's this distribution of my observation, so this is the distribution of salaries, and then here's my distribution uh, my standard normal distribution. So we're always working whoops, always working with both of these distributions. This is the one that has that population mean mu. This one always has a mean of zero. This one has the standard deviation 6,410. This one has the standard deviation of one. The relationship between these two is this Z score, right? So we can standardize our values, in this case, standardize our sample means, so that we can compare them against the standard normal distribution and therefore figure out these probabilities that we want. Now, in all of these cases, we're looking at a, um, a distance of 750 from the mean. So this one's 750, 750, and 750. So what we're looking at from that distribution of salaries, I have two values. This one is mean plus 750. This is the mean minus 750. Okay, now we want to translate that into our standard normal distribution so that I can figure out, well, what's the probability uh, that I'm between these two values, right? What is this probability that I'm between those two um, those two values uh, above and below the mean by seven hundred and fifty dollars. So I need to calculate then this area here that corresponds with that upper uh, limit, which is this one here, and the lower limit, which is this one here. Now, as you can see, those are both seven hundred and fifty dollars from the mean. So this one, this distance from the mean and this distance from the mean, in this case of zero, are both going to be exactly the same. So here's what we're going to do. For part A, for part A and B actually, the calculation is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to need to calculate Z2, I'm going to need to calculate Z1, and our, our probability of interest, this probability that we are between these two values. So the probability of getting a Z, in other words, a sample mean, or a Z score that is less than or equal to, oops, Z2, greater than or equal to Z1, well, we're gonna need to calculate the probability that Z is less than or equal to Z, Z2. So that's the whole area we find uh, this will that'll be this whole region in here right and that's the probability that we're less than z2 and then i need to subtract off of it the probability that i'm less than or equal to z1 so then we subtract from it this region in here leaving us with 
that yellow space in between, which is exactly the probability that we want. So let's figure out our z values. So the formula, as we can see here, is x bar minus mu. Um, in both of these cases, we know that that gap is the difference between our, our x bars, uh, our limits are 750, positive 750 and negative 750. So z2, this is gonna be positive 750 divided by that standard error, which is 6410, divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 100. And z1, well, I know that that difference is the same, it's minus 750, and the denominator is the same, 6410 over the square root of 100. Okay, so what are those going to be now? Let's get our calculator. So 750 divided by, I'm going to open up brackets, 6410 over square root of 100, close brackets, equals uh, something is not quite right here. Let me try that again. 750 divided by open 6410 divided by square root of 100 equals, there we go, 117. And this calculation here, the only difference is that negative sign, so this is going to be negative 117 as well. So now what we need to do is go to our z tables and figure out these probabilities. So I'll come to my z table here. I'm looking at uh, 1, 1.17 positive and negative. So here's negative, negative 1.17. And so that gives me a probability here of 12.121. Uh, so let's come back here. That is this one here, 0 0.1210 minus, now the probability below the positive, which is positive uh, 117. So here we are down here, 1.17, and there we are, 879. 0 0.879, and that equals 0.879 minus 0 0.121, 0 0.758. So there we go, 0 0.758. Now, notice that for parts A and B, there's nothing about this question that's going to change. And my sample size is the same, 100 computer science students versus 100 engineering majors. My standard deviation is the same for both, oops, 6,410, that's the same for both. And I'm looking for a distance of $750 from the mean. That's the same for both. So it actually doesn't matter what the population mean is, because we know, if I scroll up here, we can see that, well, the population means are different between the two, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't really enter into the calculation. What we're looking for is how accurate will we be? In other words, how close, what's the probability that we'll be close to the mean, whatever it is? And our, our proximity of interest here is $750. And so because of that's the same between parts A and B, our answers are going to be exactly the same for parts A and B. Now, part C changes a little bit because part C, now we're going to increase the sample size. And instead of 100, now we're gonna increase the sample size to 150. So we're gonna go through the same exercise. I'm gonna delete these numbers because now they don't hold anymore. And we're going to have a little bit larger of a sample size, and we'll see just how that changes things. So everything here is the same. 
everything in here is the same for part C. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to redo a lot of these calculations. Even these numbers are the same. We're still looking for a range of $750 to either side of the population mean. So my numerators in these two calculations are the same, 750. Standard deviation is still 6,410. 6,410. But now the square root of my sample size has changed. It's 150. So over the square root of 150. And we'll see how that changes um, our calculations. So if I come up here, oops, there's my calculator. 750 divided by 6410 divided by 150 square root close brackets equals 1.43 so this one is going to be positive 143 this one oh this is a negative so this is negative 1.43 so now we go and calculate our probabilities this one here is now 1.43 this one here is negative 1.43 so let's look up uh, positive 143 so there's 1.43 and so where those come together 0 0.9236 0 0.9236 and on the other side, negative 1.43, negative 1.43, and those come together here, 0 0.0764, 0 0.0764, and now that's going to be... 0.9236 minus 0 0.0764 8472 oops 8472 okay so let me just clear up some space here so our answer for part C well it's increased 84.72. Our probability has increased relative to parts A and B. Why? Well, because we have a larger sample size. And so as our sample size grows, it becomes increasingly accurate in predicting uh, the, the true population mean. And so the only difference between all of these calculations, right, we're looking at the same interval or the same distance from the mean. But for these ones, we're looking at a, a sample size of 100 each. This one, we increase that sample size 50% up to 150. And so in doing so, our estimates of the mean become more accurate because we have more information. We have a larger sample. There's more information in that larger sample. And so we, have a, we increase our probability of obtaining a sample that is representative of the population. So our probability increased from, let's call it 75.8% to 84.7%. So that's one of the main benefits of always getting the largest sample size uh, that you can. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this was helpful. Um, we could go through for business and agriculture as well, but as you can see, that true population mean uh, doesn't matter. So you can just digest that for your own uh, for your own information. Okay, I hope this was uh, of use. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.